Acts chapter 11. If you are there, shout amen. amen. If you are not there, say, wait for me. Verse 1. He said, and when they, nigh, they came nigh to Jerusalem, unto Bethphage of Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two forth of his disciples, verse 2, and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. Please, I want the all shall to divide the pamphlet as I'm preaching. Go and start dividing the pamphlet. And as soon as ye enter into it, ye shall find the court. Dominic, come and assist him. And it, it, you find a court tied. tied. Lose him and bring him. Verse 3. If any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord had need of him. Verse, and straight away he will send him hither. Verse 4. And they went their way. And find the court tied by the door, door without a place where two ways met. They lose him and let him go. Somebody say, Man, if you are the one that is loose, being loose now. Amen. If you are the one that is being loose now, shall they bite you, Amen, again now? Amen. Verse 5 And a certain, a certain of them that stood said unto them, What do ye? Losing the court. Verse 6. And they said unto them, Even as Jesus has commanded, and they let them go. Verse 7. And they brought the court to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. Somebody here, God is going to sit on your life in the name of Jesus. Verse 8. And many spread their garments in the way. And others cut down branches of the tree and straw them in the way. Verse 9. And they went before, and that they that followed cried, saying, O Sinai, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Verse 10. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Everybody read that last page together. One, two, three, go. Read it again now, huh? Read it one more time. Shout it with a loud voice. I can't hear you shouting with the loudest voice. Rosina in the highest. Sit down and shout, I am in charge. I am in charge. I want to talk very, very, very briefly on what I title Holding Pattern. Holding Pattern. By the grace of God, I've been able to witness many Palm Sundays. Many. One is enough. And this scripture that we have, I have preached it multiple times. But the word of God is always moving. And so you get revelations every day. Holding pattern. Human beings have one character. Human beings have one character. And that character is what I call impatient. Naturally, human beings are very, very impatient. They can't wait. Especially if you are from the African side, the African, uh, uh, the, the African people. It is very difficult for them to wait. Sometimes when you are asked to wait, it looks like punishment. It looks like punishment. Waiting can be very, very difficult. Especially when you are going somewhere. When you have something you are doing and you want to get there on time and you are being stuck 
or you are being stranded, you get frustrated. If you have somewhere you are going to and you are programmed yourself that in the next two hours or the next one hour, I will be in that place. And for one reason or the other, you come across certain things on the way that will make you to start waiting or delaying you. You get agitated. Sometimes when you are moving from, there are sometimes I calculate myself. If I'm coming to church, from Wari down to church, I give myself at least 30 minutes plus or minus to get to church. But there was a day I was coming from church. I was already running very late. And they stopped me along that barrel road. And the policeman that day was as if they sent it to delay me that day. The policeman heard me on the way and was asking me very, very, very odd questions. And as a result, I was not able to come to church on time. I remember I called Pastor Amos to please get to church, start the service before me. But as I was there, being interrogated by the police, I was sweating. I was sweating. I couldn't even settle down to even gather my papers. They were even there in front of me. But because I was in a hurry to get to somewhere, I didn't see the paper correctly. There was a day I was assigned to go and preach in a church. Somewhere in nowhere. I told you the story before. And I didn't know that a full market day was that particular day. So it takes me ordinarily, let's say, 15 minutes for my place to, uh, to wear. But that day, the market day was on, and so I was stuck in traffic. I was there for a number of times. The only thing that saved me that day was I was going with uh, cafe. So I told cafe, I own AC, but I was sweating. I was sweating because they are already waiting for me. Because we are already calling into my phone. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Not that I wanted to be there late, but somehow I have been stuck in a waiting or a holding condition. And because of that, the AC in my car was not working well anymore. The car stereo in my car was almost looking as if it was the one delaying me. I said, off the caster, increase the AC, wind down, wind up. Oh, drive now. Why? Because I was already frustrated. Whenever you are going somewhere and you are stuck in a holding position or a holding condition, you get frustrated. You get agitated. You know that where you are is not where you have programmed yourself. To be, you know that by now you shall be married by now. By now you should have had your children by now. By now you should have got to your, your beauty by now. By now you should have been able to even buy a land by now. By now you should have your business by now. By now you should have been settled in your husband's house. You know, but somehow you are kept in a whole deep position. So because that is not where you are going to, you get agitated and you get frustrated. Everything around you makes no sense anymore. Everyone gets you annoyed. You start suspecting AC, suspecting Castello, suspecting your mother, suspecting your father, suspecting your pastor, suspecting everybody. The reason is because you are on a mission to get to somewhere, but you are stuck in a holding condition. You are stranded. And you cannot be able to come out of that place. Because every attempt you try to leave that position, something or someone is holding you down. You are not in a traffic because if you are in a traffic, the car is moving, but it's moving slowly. You are in a go slow, a hold up. Hold up. Sometimes when we come out of hold up, 
we begin to ask ourselves what was really causing the hold up. When you get to the point where the hold up was, you will be shocked that there was nothing there. But that thing has delayed you for two hours. A man who has a vision, when it's been delayed, he gets frustrated. A man who is on a mission to get to somewhere, when he's stranded, he gets really frustrated. He gets really tired. Many of you hearing the sound of my voice, you are stuck in a holding pattern. You are stuck in a holding situation. You know where you are going to. I remember vividly, maybe you did not play that game. I played that game when we were small. When we are asking ourselves, what will you be when you get old? Some will say, I will be this and be that. And when they sit back and look at their life, they tell you that I am even far, I have not even got to where I was. It's like I never start. It's like you don't even know the direction you took is even different. I came here with an annoyance in my spirit. If your amen meet me on this altar, anyone in a holding pattern, I should shout amen. May God jack you out of that place in the name of Jesus. If your amen meet me here on this altar, you are stuck in a holding position. May your amen drag you out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy by the mandate of heaven, any power that says they will keep you in one place. If your amen is not like your neighbor, may you come out in the name of Jesus. Sit down. When you are stuck in a holding position, you get angry. You get angry. You get angry. You get bitter. You get bitter. People don't understand why you are naturally bitter. The reason why you are bitter is because you know that you are going somewhere, but you are being held in a holding position. Now, the worst of it all is when you are stuck in a holding position, it brings embarrassment. There was a day I was watching social media. A young boy was driving his Lexus saloon car. And he drove and came to where his lecturer was. His lecturer was trekking. And he went down and he hung and he hung and he hung. And told the lecturer, he said, all the things you have been teaching us all these years, you are still trekking. Oh! When I saw this, this thing, I went for the lecturer. Funny enough, people who were, who were teaching, they have not grown. And they have not become that thing you dream of. And you are still in the state of teaching. Can I prophesy? Maybe I'm not speaking to everybody, but can I prophesy? If you hear the sound of my voice, any power that self, people will be leaving you and expassing you. They will become here you are and they will pass you. If you shout amen, may God bring you out in the name of Jesus. May God bring you out in the name of Jesus. There are 24 people here that are here in my spirit that God said to announce to you. By the end of this summer, you are coming out. 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 Stuck in the holy pattern. Hear me. Hear me. The world is moving so fast. The world is moving so fast. So fast that small children they will run. And in those days, they respect elders. But now they don't respect elders anymore. Small children will come and sit in your chair. And you'll be telling the, the small picky say, Don't you know I am your elder? The child will be telling you, say, You are my elder, but what's your evidence? 
What's your evidence? You check and you came here. When I came here with my convoy, if your amen meet me here, I prophesy. Your story is changing in the name of Jesus. Your story is changing in the name of Jesus. Your story is changing in the name of Jesus. 24 of you, your story is changing in the name of Jesus. See that? Stuck in a holding pattern. When you are in a holding pattern, it's, a, it's torture. It's torture. It's torture. You want to leave that place, but you can't. You want to change location, but you can't. You are trying to come out. Have you ever been in a hold up? And you cannot leave your vehicle. You cannot park in the middle of the road. You are stuck there. You want to leave. It's like when you fly out of the place, but you are stuck. Jesus in his ministry he did 37 miracles 37 miracles I need a handkerchief this one is already soaked now he was about to go to the Jerusalem and the Bible said he did one more miracle I can say that before he cut the ear of Marcus, because Marcus was the one that Peter cut his ear on the day of, of Easter. That miracle was the last miracle Christ did. But the miracle he did before he did the Marcus miracle, because the Marcus miracle was unintentional. Why did I say unintentional? It was, it was, it wasn't as if he planned to put his ear together. He didn't plan it. But there are other miracles that he did, that he did intentional. And one of that miracle, the last miracle, was that when he was about to go to Jerusalem, he saw a cot and an ass tied there. Tied in a village outside where he was. And Jesus had to be stuck. The reason why he had to set the cot free. If he did not set the cot free, that cot will die in that place. Can I tell you something? If your amen meet me here, you will not die in that condition. I say, if your amen meet me here, you will not die in that situation. Hear me? When I am speaking, I am prophesying, I am praying, and I am making declaration. Jesus saw the court that if he does not lose the court and set the court free, that that court will remain in that place. So he said, go to the village over against you. You find a cross, you find an ass tied there. If this is the last miracle I do before I enter the cross, let me do this miracle. Hear me and hear me clearly. You be in one place, it's not the mind of God. You be stuck in one place, it's not the will of God for you. But I came here and the court was loser. May Jehovah lose you today. May Jehovah lose you today. May Jehovah lose today. In the name of Jesus. He said, losing and letting go. Losing and letting go. Now, in that story, there are three characters in that story. The first one is the court. The second one is the crowd. The third one is Christ. The court, the crowd, and Christ. Now, at the time Jesus was entering Jerusalem, that time, the Roman Empire, they have overtaken Jerusalem 
and they have established their will on Jerusalem. They are already being colonized by the Roman Empire. But they didn't kill them. They only changed their government and installed their presidents. The Roman Empire installed their man to become president, vice president, senate president. They were the ones holding key position in Jerusalem. So the people in Jerusalem were living as if they were slaves because they were not the one in charge of their, their own country. And they were stuck for many years in one place, living as slaves in their own house, living as slaves in their own country. They are praying for a Messiah. They needed a Messiah. And they have read that a Messiah will rise to deliver them from the hands of the Roman Empire. So when they saw Jesus coming, doing miracles, causing healing, healing the sick, raising the dead, walking signs, and doing wonders, they said, this is the Messiah that has come to remove us from the Roman rule. So the Roman Empire had the crowd in their neck. They were also stuck. They were not free. They couldn't do what they ought to do. But they are patiently waiting for the Messiah. Hear me. I pray for somebody hearing my voice. I just hear this one. In the next 21 days, a helper will locate you. In the next 21 days, a helper will locate somebody here. I prophesy by the mandate of heaven, God will send somebody. He will send a man. He will send a woman. He will send somebody that will bring you out of bondage. He will send somebody that will bring you out of captivity. He will provide you a man that will help you, that will deliver you, that will hold your hands, that will carry you up, that will lift you up. Shout amen to the times. I prophesy again. It's 21 days. I see a helper. I see, I see a helper. I see a Messiah. 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 So I said, Oh no! Oh no! Send me my Messiah! Send me a Messiah! Send me a Messiah! Send me a Messiah! Send me a Messiah! One more time! Oh no! Oh no! Send me my Messiah! Send me my Messiah! There's somebody hearing my voice! I, I hear with my right ear. I receive. You are praying for a helper. You are praying for a helper. 21 days. 21 days. Amen. 21 days. Amen. Send the MS seven times. Amen. 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 Amen.